people around me to change if I haven't done anything different. Hello, my sweet angels. Welcome back. Welcome to Friend Crush with Amber Akilla. I'm your host, Amber Akilla. This is my video series where I just talk about stuff and things, cute, chaotic, and critical thinking. I'm currently in Beijing and I'm getting ready for going outside. And I just thought I would also film a video talking about recovering from people pleasing. And this is like a very, I don't know, interesting topic for me to talk about from on a personal level because I never actually identified or realized that I had people pleasing tendencies until the last few years. And I'll like talk about the process that it took me for me to come to that realization. I think it was my therapist who was like, you're self abandoning when you do that. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> Help. Anyway, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, subscribe to the channel. Um, you can message me at friend.crush for like content suggestions or like questions. And if you have like a pressing question, you can use the paid link and I'll reply to you within a week. So people pleasing. The way that I understood people pleasing is so different to how I understand it now. When I was younger, I was very introverted and more like, I don't know, judgmental, I guess. And I think that you could read that on my face <laughs> and people would say that I had resting bitch face. People would say that I was intimidating. And honestly, I don't even know if I was that judgmental. Like, I think I just minded my own business. And because I looked very different to everyone growing up in a really white area, people just have all kinds of assumptions about who you are when they don't really know how to connect with you because you look different to them. For me, I'm not like walking around with a mirror all the time and able to be aware of how I physically looked different to everyone around me and how that affected their perception of me and the way they interacted with me. So I was just like, oh, I'm just a person. But to them, obviously there's like some other thing going on in their minds about how they saw me. And I think that a lot of people would sort of not know how to approach me. And they would say like, oh, you're, you look so intimidating. Why don't you smile more, blah, blah, blah. And I think that is rooted in misogyny in some ways, but it is what it is. Because I was always told that I seemed really scary and intimidating, I never considered that my behavior was prioritizing other people's needs over my own. And in some cases, I think I internalized this message that I looked really mean and I was a bitch. So I needed to go the extra mile to show people that I am a nice person and I can put other people first which is so messed up. But at the same time, like I had friends that were more extroverted than me. And I thought that people pleasing was just like stroking other people's ego. Like I would be, say it was like me and a friend. I'm sure so many of us have been in this situation. It's like you and a friend, you bump into someone that your friend knows and your friend's like, oh my God, so good to see you. Like, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you look so good. La, 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 la. And then that person walks away. And then your friend is like, oh my God, I don't even know who that is. Oh my God, I hate that person. And you're like, huh? <laughs> you were just so nice to them. I thought that's what people pleasing was. But that is actually now, like when I talk about people pleasing, that is just stroking other people's ego. You know, you don't actually necessarily lose anything by giving someone a compliment that you don't necessarily like believe with your whole chest, okay? Okay. There's nothing, I don't know if that's like a good or a bad character trait. It's just something that some people are good at. And I think it's nice that you can say nice things to people. I think it's better if what you're saying is genuine and that you don't like turn around and then, um, you know, retract your statement to the person who witnessed you say it. But that actually is not people pleasing. I don't know if that is like obvious to other people but to me for so long that's how I thought that's what I thought people pleasing was and because I'm not like that I don't really go out of my way to give 
people compliments that I don't genuinely believe in, I was like, oh, I'm not a people pleaser then. But people pleasing the way that I understand it now, it's not necessarily something that you outwardly observe because you don't necessarily observe it in yourself and other people don't necessarily know the ways in which you are self-abandoning in order to maintain your connection with them or in order to maintain a relationship with someone or in order to try to like keep the peace in a situation because it's like an internal process that occurs and then you act upon it but you don't necessarily communicate it and I think this is something that took me a while to like process and become aware of and then to just take like baby steps towards remedying so that I was still able to have a healthy sense of self, still feel centered in who I was while also contributing to like the external things around me, whether that's work, activities, hobbies, relationships, friendships. So I think it's really important to understand that if you want to recover from people pleasing tendencies, it's not an overnight process it takes time and the reason is because when you are so used to putting other people's needs ahead of your own for you to suddenly decide to say no to something that you were so used to or so in the habit of agreeing to you feel like you're like being so selfish in that moment and I think always agreeing to the plans that your friends make because you don't want to disappoint them this is such a small thing that would take has taken me so long to get in the habit of. Like I've spoken about before, I think that my schedule ever since I graduated high school, when I was at university, when I worked full time, when I worked freelance, my schedule is genuinely more flexible than someone who works a full time job. Even when I had a full time job, my office hours were like not always that clear. So I've always thought that it's my responsibility to manage my schedule around other people rather than prioritizing my schedule first and then seeing how other people fit into it. And when I first started to try to make sure that I was protecting my own time and the things that were important to me, it felt so selfish of me to not like shape my time around somebody else who like wanted to see me, even if it was for a small thing like getting a coffee or going for a walk. Or I'd normalize this idea that because my schedule is more flexible than other people's, then I have to be the one that sacrifices her time in order to make something work. But in to be in a truly healthy relationship or a friendship, it's like you both meet in the middle, right? And of course, if I do have a more flexible schedule and I don't have things that are like high priority, I can make a compromise to meet a friend at a time that's convenient for them if their schedule is more rigid, right? But I can't be doing that all the time with every single person in my life and then wonder why I'm not getting things done at the rate at which I want to get them done. Or I start feeling depleted because I've given away all my energy to other people and not taken enough time for myself. So it's really important to take baby steps. I think the way that I see things now is like, you have, let's say you have two containers inside of you and one is energy that needs to go to yourself to maintain your sense of self. This involves like self-care practices, whether it's meditation, journaling, working out, eating well, sleeping well, drinking enough water, making sure you have time to yourself to decompress, making sure you get enough rest. This is like a container that you have that energy needs to go into to make sure that you're like filling your own cup okay and then you have another container that's like energy that you put into external things in your life job family friends education romantic relationships you have one for your internal life your relationship with yourself and one for your external life your relationship with the world outside of you look at these little cups okay this is your internal cup this is your external cup now if you pour in here but not here It'll just overflow and pour to nowhere. You've wasted energy. So it's important that you find a balance between these two things. And everyone's internal container and external container is going to be different sizes, different shapes. It's going to evolve over time. And part of developing self-awareness, I think, and being intentional in your life is understanding how the shapes and sizes of these containers change over time and how you can make sure that there is some kind of balance between the two of them. So for some people... Maybe your internal container is much bigger 
like this and your external container is small. You need a lot of time and energy for yourself to make sure that you feel balanced and centered and you only have so much energy that you can give other people. And part of having boundaries is being able to make sure that you are prioritizing this container and making sure that it's full before you overexert yourself pouring into this. And for other people, it might be the other way around. Your internal container is small. You don't need that much time alone. You're more extroverted. You enjoy being outside and engaging with people, engaging with the world. And you need to make sure that this is full, but you have a lot to give others. Okay. And it might change at different stages in your life. Sometimes I'm like this. Okay. I need a lot of internal time. I need a lot of time to myself to make sure that I'm recharged. And then I can only have this much to give other people. And then other times in my life, it's like this. When I'm when this has been full consistently enough, this outside container can grow and then I have more to give other people. But this can shift and change like very quickly for me, I think. So I need to make sure that I'm just aware of like what I need to be doing for myself and what I have to give to other people. And when you are in people pleasing tendencies, you are not aware that your internal cup is bigger maybe, or it needs more attention than your external cup. And you just overflow like this. Okay, you're taking energy that could be directed here and you're pouring it in here and then it's overflowing and going nowhere. Does that make sense? <laughs> so I think it's also important to understand selfishness and the spectrum of selfishness because there is selfishness that allows for win-win situations. I'm prioritizing myself and another person's needs as equally important and we can compromise and meet in the middle. Then there's like a spectrum that goes towards selfishness that it's like me and everybody else loses. I win at your expense. And I think that that's how a lot of people think of selfishness. And when you are in people pleasing tendencies, you think that any move that you make that prioritizes you means that other people lose. At least that's how I felt. I was like, oh, I can't say no to this or I have to do this because otherwise all these other people are going to be disappointed and then I'm a bad person or I am being selfish. And that's not necessarily the case. Like, why do I have to take an L so that everybody else can get a win? You know, it should be win-win. And if I don't communicate what I need in order to feel like I'm getting a win out of this. How can I expect the people around me to know what I need? And then if I communicate what's important to me and the people that I'm close to or that I care about don't care about that, then that's an issue. Like if they consistently deny basic bare minimum things that I need to feel seen or to feel like our relationship is healthy and equal, then I need to address whether I want that relationship in my life anymore, whether that relationship is truly healthy for me because it shouldn't be in your close relationships that you're just giving, giving, giving and not receiving anything in return. Of course, there are going to be times where you do things out of the kindness of your own heart <laughs> and you don't expect anything in return, but it should not be that you are just pouring, pouring, pouring into relationships outside of you and no one and you don't receive anything. Like if I'm giving my time and energy to be there for a friend when they're having a hard time, and then when I'm having a hard time, they're nowhere to be seen. How close am I really with that person? How equal is that friendship? And I think it's not as simple as like tit for tat. I think different types of relationships offer or like contribute different things to your life the same way that you contribute differently to the lives of other the people around you. There's all these different like little dynamics I think that occur in friendships and relationships and it's just important to see how you're feeling in them because if you feel depleted in a relationship that's a sign for you to assess how much energy you're putting into it and what you are or aren't receiving and it's not about telling people exactly what you need and what your boundaries are and what your standards are. It's just knowing when to take a step forward and knowing when to take a step back. I think obviously communicate to people when your feelings have been hurt, when there's a conflict, but I don't think that you go around telling people like, well, this is what I need from a relationship. And um, if you can't give it to me, then you have to change or like, this isn't going to work. I don't think you need to like give people those kinds of ultimatums because anyone that's like truly secure in themselves, when you tell them something like that, they're going to tell you to F off. 
I mean, even if they're not secure in themselves, anything that is a habit for somebody and you've observed that they do like to you and to other people on a consistent and regular basis, it's going to be difficult for them to change. Like you can indicate to someone like, hey, you know, you're complaining a lot about things that are out of your control. I think that sometimes you maybe need to, have you thought about, you know, I don't know. I think it's tough. If people don't directly ask you for your advice, there's no reason why you have to school them on how to exist. I think you just need to live by example. Like for me, I've definitely been in friendships where because of the work that I've been doing on myself and trying to like not take things personally, trying to just like exercise detachment in areas of my life that I have no control over and just focusing on being hard and having fun. I've noticed the ways in which it's like affected the people around me. Like some people are able to embrace this as well and we grow together and other people aren't ready for that. And we're just not as close anymore. I don't need to tell people what I'm doing. I just live my life, you know, (laughs) and I can share my position and people are either down with it or not that down with it. And I don't feel like I need to justify or explain myself anymore because I recognize the ways in which me being consistent with who I am and what I want attracts other people that respect that and get it. And I can have fun with, you know, we can have fun together and not have to worry about the shit that I don't want to worry about anymore, but it takes time and it's baby steps. So I think it's really important when you are starting off with reflecting on your behavior and how you can recover from people pleasing is to think about and like write down the ways in which you might self-abandon write down the things that are important to you or even if it's just for like a week or a month a few weeks or a month just to observe the times in which you feel like maybe a little bit uncomfortable or like you're not really honoring yourself And you can just like keep notes in your phone or like every morning reflect on it. But I think it's important that you have it in writing and not just like floating around in your mind. So maybe questions that you can ask yourself are like, if I was going to prioritize myself, I would need to start. What's what are your answers to that? Right. If I was going to make sure that I was meeting my own needs, I would need to say no when I mean no not agree to go to events that I don't really want to go to, not agree to go to dinners that I can't afford. If I was honest about how some of my relationships are not equal, I would need to be more upfront with when I do and don't like something, when I do and don't want to do something. And it can be really tough when you kind of have a feeling that if you say no to things, to the people that you otherwise care about, people that you would consider your friends, that they aren't going to like you so much or they don't want to be friends with you anymore. And to that, I just say it's okay to get new friends. It is okay to get new friends. If the people around you prefer it when you are in your people-pleasing state, when you say yes to everything, when you don't question them, when you don't prioritize yourself, it is okay for you to get new friends because you deserve to be around people who give you the space to honor yourself and that you also give that space to, right? And when you start to do that for yourself, expanding like the amount of space that you allow for your own needs, there are going to be people that are pushed away by that but also like building a new identity and a new self means that there are people who don't want to be with friends with someone who's constantly self-sacrificing and self-abandoning and feeling guilty all the time and want to be friends with someone who has healthy boundaries and can say no. Sometimes I still am like worried about saying no to a friend that I know would be totally okay with me not being able to do something because I don't want to disappoint them. You know, like they might ask me, um, do you want to go to this restaurant next week and like maybe I want to go but I know that I have like things that I need to prioritize next week and it would be better for me not to I still want to say yes because I want to hang out with my friend but I also have to remind myself like okay I need to get this thing done by next week so I'll say no to this but I follow up by saying okay I'm not going to be able to make it so you go ahead 
but let's do something next week when my schedule isn't so crazy. And because I'm able to do that, but like that is like hard for me to do sometimes, which is crazy because I guess maybe like outwardly, I don't think I appear that way, but I'm fighting demons. (laughs) I think when I am able to like properly assert myself outwardly, people underestimate the amount of energy and time it might take me to actually get to that place. And that's what I think I really want to be able to communicate to people. It's not that you just wake up one day and you don't give a fuck about what anybody else thinks and you're able to prioritize yourself without second guessing yourself. Your ability to appear that way to other people is your internal process of like gassing yourself up to be like, no, this is important to me. I need to say no to this person or to this situation so that I can do what's important to me. And it's not about you winning against everybody else, everybody else losing. Like nobody is actually losing from you saying no to going to an event that you don't really want to go to, you know? It's actually win-win when you are able to stay home and not waste your money or waste your time or just not be in a situation you don't want to be in. And for other people who want to do that, to go and enjoy that with people that actually want to be there. People that would rather you be miserable and keep them company than for you to enjoy spending time with them. Why do you want to spend time with people like that? You know what I mean? I don't want to drag my friend along to something that she fundamentally is not interested in if she's expressed that and I'm like guilting her into it, you know? So you don't need to be that for other people. And if the people around you make you feel that way, it's okay to get new friends, okay? I think it's much more difficult with parents and I don't think I have enough time to like talk about that here but it is the same general principle learning when it's when you feel safe to take a step forward into a relationship pour a little more into it or when you need to reserve that energy for yourself because when you're in the habit of doing things you think that every the amount of energy you pour here the amount of energy that you pour here is just fixed because you're in the habit of doing it so you need to slowly slowly Take baby steps. Okay, more energy here or more energy here today. And then when you build a new habit around pouring more in here, then you've built like a new foundation of yourself. You've rewired the neurons in your brain. But developing an awareness of the size of these containers, the amount of energy you're pouring into them is what's really important. Because whether you realize it or not, you are making choices on where the energy is going But because you're not aware of the fact that you're making these choices, you think that it's default. And I think that that's kind of what defines self-awareness is being able to understand that you can redirect where your energy goes instead of thinking that there is somebody who is forcing you into doing that. You might feel like you're being forced to say yes to go to events that you don't want to go to because the people around you might be good at manipulating you. But you do have a choice. You can say no. They might make you feel bad about it, but it doesn't mean that you don't have a right to not do something that you don't want to do, right? And of course, there is compromise. And of course, it's going to be different for every person what their limits and capacities are. But your ability to be self-aware is your ability to become aware of those things, right? And to take ownership of them. And it is not an overnight process. I'm sorry. I wish that it was. But it's ongoing, you know, even though I can talk about how I've personally been able to change my understanding of people pleasing, it's still something that I need to be mindful of. But I'm so glad that I was able to recognize that within myself because I do actually think that I told my therapist when I first started going to therapy or both of my therapists, I'm not really going to therapy that much anymore. I did say to them, I was like, I want to feel more confident in saying no to things that I don't want to do. I want to be able to prioritize myself without feeling guilty because a lot of people don't feel so bad about it. So why do I have to feel bad? Think about the average sleigh in any given situation. Okay. Say that you're in a great place and all these people around you are having a shit time. And why do you have to give up your energy, your hard earned self to make all these other people feel better If they're not going to contribute anything in return, if it's not a two way street, right? I think a healthy relationship is like, I'm giving into this relationship. You're also pouring into the relationship. Everybody has these two cups. Okay. This external cup is where you pour into and other people pour into you receive in return. And some people, they just want you to go like this and dump everything in your cup into their external cup and then take it for themselves. But I think a healthy relationship is like 
I'm sharing my reality, you're sharing your reality, we create a shared reality together in this external cup, okay? But nobody can fill this internal cup for you. There is a barrier, there is a key code that only you know. And if you don't become aware of that fact, then you are forever beholden to thinking that filling this cup is going to be enough. So awareness of both of these cups, internal cup, external cup, is very important. Being able to see and become aware of how your external cup is being filled by others and how you are pouring into theirs as well. So there are going to be people and situations where maybe you've got to give and pour into someone else's cup and you don't get anything in return. That's okay. It should not be the constant state in which you live. That is like an exception. Most of the time, if you for your healthy relationships, for the work that you do, you want to be receiving as much as you are giving. It's not like, oh, I did this for you, so you have to do the same thing for me. You are aware of like whether your relationships are fulfilling to you and to your friend. You're getting paid what you're worth. You're, you're able to progress in the way that you want to. It's not easy to do these things because you need to have like short-term awareness of what's going on in the present moment, but then also have a general awareness of like your long-term goals and what's important to you and how those things might shift over time. But I believe in you. And awareness is the key. Awareness is what gives you the privilege of choice, which allows you to then be intentional with the way that you act. And I think we want to skip into results. We think that the thought becomes the action, but like your thought and then your awareness around the thought and then like the intention that you take with your action then leads to a result, leads to a consequence, whether it's positive or negative, whether it fills your cup, internal cup or your external cup, that's up to you. Well, so I think also like in the society and culture that we live in, hyper-capitalism, patriarchy, so much of things that we see in the media is about win-lose. There's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser in any outcome, in any relationship and this power play. And I think that we overlook sometimes the way that we can create win-win because it's, it's easier to just like steam roll what is the term? It's easier to forget about everybody else and just pursue your single-mindedly pursue what you want, right? At the expense of others. It takes more effort to not only become aware of what you want, but to create space for somebody else and what they want and to see how you can have a win-win situation. But I think that is the ideal, right? That is what we should all be striving for. If we want to be living in like a healthy, society people in positions of privilege and power who have gotten there by operating in a win-lose way it is very difficult for them to imagine like the people that they're used to losing the people that they're used to exploiting getting some kind of benefit from the situation does that make sense like if i'm in a position of privilege and i've gotten used to my lifestyle and the privilege that i have being at the expense of other people's exploited labor it's like easy to think that I lose something when someone that I'm used to exploiting is getting something that they don't usually get. Does that make sense? And this happens on the macro and in the micro, right? It's like pretty privilege, right? If you're so used to being the prettiest person in the room or the hottest guy in the room, if, you have, if you've dated a guy that has golden dick syndrome, he's not used to a woman not being interested in his physical appearance not being interested in him because of his physical appearance. People that are used to pretty privilege are not used to ugly people getting a chance. (laughs) Not all, but sometimes. They think that another person being considered attractive takes away from their attractiveness, but you must have an abundant mindset, okay? There aren't, these limits are imaginary and we place them on ourselves and we place them on society. And I think that when you get into the habit of understanding your own needs, creating space for other people's needs, then you're able to have much healthier interactions and exchanges and transactions. Projects that I've worked on that I felt the most fulfilled by, the friendships that I've had, the relationships that I've had that I felt most fulfilled by have been where we're able to do that. And you appreciate it so much more because it takes so much more effort. And then the rewards that you experience are also so much better than you just being able to walk away with your bag and everybody else being exploited or the person that you were in a relationship with feeling like they've been taken advantage of. And if you've been on the receiving end where you feel like you've been taken advantage of and someone has just walked all over you, then becoming aware of like the ways in which you were not asserting yourself 
when you needed to, the red flags within yourself is part of the healing process. And then learning to nurture and exercise that muscle so that in your next relationship, you're a different version of yourself. Maybe you're still not able to take full ownership of your boundaries, but you are allowed to practice that in the next relationship. And maybe the partner that you're with supports that, you grow together. Maybe it only works out the way for the amount of time that it works out and you go your separate ways. It's important to also like practice maintaining and honoring your boundaries. It's not something that you can just do by yourself in your room, okay? You actually need to say no <laughs> to other people or say yes to what's important to you. Healing cannot occur in a vacuum because what we need to heal is not just our relationship with ourselves, but also how our relationship with ourselves affects our relationship with others. And it doesn't mean that you just are like going out and taking advantage of people and seeing what you can get away with, but it's just about pacing yourself and having more awareness around parts of yourself and how you connect with others in ways that you previously didn't. And that doesn't mean that you're using people. It just means that you're exploring and experiencing life. But I also think it's important to be honest about what you want and what you're looking for. Like if you're in a stage in your life where you don't want to be in a serious relationship, you need to communicate that to the people that you're dating. And a lot of people, you know, they say that it's not that serious, but then it becomes serious. Or they say that it is serious and it's not that serious. Communication is key because your standards your capacity, your ability is going to shift and change at different stages of your life. And it's important that you're able to communicate that to the people that you're close with or the people that you're developing connections with. Easier said than done, not a perfect process by any means. Real change is not just about superficial things. It's not just about how your personal style has changed. It's not just about the way that you look. It's about your internal relationship with yourself. I might look the same that I did a few months ago to a lot of people, but my relationship with myself has changed and developed a lot in that time. And some people around you are going to be okay with that and other people aren't. And for me, like I'm always so open to the ways in which the people that I care about are changing and evolving because I want people to create that space for me too. I don't want people to hold me to somebody that I was a year ago, six months ago, because with new experiences comes new learning, new wisdom, new perspective. And you want, I mean, I want to live a life that allows for that. Because otherwise, what's the point of being alive if it's just the same shit over and over again? I didn't ask to be born. It's not like I want to die. But if I'm going to be alive, then I want it to be a good time, right? Part of that is putting in the effort to set healthier boundaries so that I have the energy to not only feel centered in who I am, but then I know exactly what I can give to my relationships and to the external things in my life. You don't want to live in a constant state of you giving and giving and giving at your own expense. You don't want this to be empty or not even close to full while this just overflows and energy is just going nowhere. You're not being sustainable. It's not sustainable, okay? It's bad for your mental global warming, your mental environment. Imagine like your life is a garden and the water is the energy that you have to dedicate to different parts of your life. You have one area that's for your work, one area for your romantic relationships, one area for your platonic relationships, one area for your family, one area for your hobbies. Sometimes certain areas are going to get more energy than others right? And there are different seasons in your life, different seasons in a garden where some areas are going to bloom, other areas are going to be a little bit more dormant. But when you are in a chronic state of people pleasing and you're not using your energy wisely, you just start watering patches of dirt that don't have any seeds in them. You want to be able to become aware of like, what is growing where? What do you want to grow where and when? And being patient, knowing that, you know, you water and then you let something grow rather than digging it up and wondering why it hasn't grown yet. But when you're wasting your energy, imagine you have a garden and there's just areas that have nothing in them and it doesn't matter how much you water it, nothing will grow there. Or you keep watering it and then weeds grow. And now you have more problems, okay? Do you want peace or do you want problems? I want peace and prosperity. I don't want problems. Problems I need to deal with Like there's going to be issues no matter what. Things are out of your control and that's what some of your energy, your external energy is for, being able to deal with these problems that just come your way. 
but why would I create problems for myself? You know what I mean? Why am I going to water the weeds in my garden when I could just not water them and they wouldn't grow? Or if I made sure that I was managing the amount of water that was going there, I was still able to pull out the weeds without them taking over the whole garden. Things to think about. Those are my thoughts on people pleasing, having a win-win approach to life, not getting into a habit or breaking the habit of always thinking that other people's win has to come at your expense. And whatever trauma it is that has, I don't know exactly like what traumatic event was the impetus for me to get into that habit, maybe like experiencing victim blaming or something. I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't actually matter where something comes from. It just matters that you develop an awareness of it and you take action towards reshaping who you are or your life in a direction that's actually like healthy for you or what you want. If what you want is to get over your people pleasing tendencies and to actually prioritize yourself and have healthy boundaries and healthy relationships. Not everybody wants that. Not everybody is ready for genius. And that's okay because different people are at different stages of their lives at different times. For me, there was times in my life where I was not ready for genius. I didn't know that I had people-pleasing tendencies. There were people around me that were willing to exploit that. And until I learned to say no, that was just going to keep happening. Okay, I can't expect the people around me to change if I haven't done anything different. I can't expect to be treated differently if I'm not doing anything different. And sometimes part of that is letting go of relationships that don't want to give you that space. They can't, they won't, it doesn't matter why. Them leaving your space is space for someone who can actually honor this new version of you, the different version of you. It doesn't mean that it's not painful. It doesn't mean that people that we might not be compatible with don't care about us or that we don't care about them. At the end of the day, like you need to be the person that's living your life. People will come and go. At the end of the day, it's your head on your pillow. I'm so grateful for the people that I'm close with that have seen me through different stages of life. If push comes to shove, I am okay with them choosing themselves, even if it might temporarily disappoint me. I might really want my friend to come with me to an event, but they might have other things that are important to them and it's okay for them to disappoint me in that moment. Like, I'll get over it. You know, of course, there's times when my friends might really want me to do something and I just don't genuinely feel like I have the capacity to do so. I need to be okay with them being disappointed. There is a difference between disappointing other people in the moment and expecting people to give up themselves to make you feel good, okay? And some people will conflate those two things. They think that you saying no to them is like an affliction on their identity, is like a invalidation of what they want because they need this external validation to feel good about the things that maybe they don't want to do or the boundaries that they don't have. That's not your responsibility. It's not your responsibility to make other people feel good about the choices that they've made if they're against what they really want. The same way that it's not other people's job to become aware of your boundaries. Nobody knows what size your internal cup is. They're not going to truly know. They might have an awareness. I might have friends that know like, okay, Amber likes spending a lot of time by herself. They don't know how much time I might need. I don't even know how much time I might need in any given moment until I sit with myself and ask. You know, like the other day I was in such a shitty mood. I was literally like, someone's going to die today (laughs) because I was feeling so shit and like everything was just pissing me off. And I was like trying to indicate to my friend that I was not in a good mood and it would not be a great time to engage with me. And, you know, we know, know each other well enough that she probably got the hint and she knows that I need time to myself when I'm feeling unhinged, but she doesn't necessarily know how much time I might need. I probably don't know how much time I need in the moment when I'm feeling very emotionally charged only until I like re-regulate myself and I'm like, okay, I'm going to give myself the next few hours or I'm just going to give myself the day and I'm going to try again tomorrow. And then the next day I woke up, I felt so much better. But if I was just like kept engaging in things that weren't urgent, that I didn't need to attend to immediately while I was feeling shitty and then just kept pushing through without taking any time to myself, who do I have to blame but me? Of course, there are going to be times where the situation does not allow for you to just tap out 
in that moment, right? You also have commitments and responsibilities that you need to follow through on. Sometimes you just lock that part of yourself away for the moment and then take time to process it later. I've had situations where I've gone through like a breakup or like a traumatic sort of event and then I've had like a commitment either that day or the next day. For example, like I remember I went through like a really fucked up breakup a few years ago. That day I had to record a live mix. I had to make like the video assets for it like, hi, I'm Amber Killer, like listen to my mix. And then um, send them to the client. I had been talking about doing this job for maybe like a month or something. And even though I knew that my relationship was coming to an end, like, of course, you still have to confront like this breakup and the emotion when it actually happens, you know, it's very emotionally overwhelming, but I'm not going to just be like, oh, I'm not going to do this because I'm feeling shit today. You know what I mean? Like I still put on a happy face, did my job and then cried about it later. But making sure you find the balance between following through on your responsibilities and then also taking time to process what you need to process. It's not that I did the job anyway and then I just ignored that I had to address like and process this pain that I was experiencing. It's that I recognized that I had a responsibility that I needed to follow through on. I also had pain that I needed to process and I needed to become aware of that and then make intentional choices on my approach so that I could still have win-win situation for myself and also for the commitment that I'd made to this job and I've had that kind of thing happen so many times and going through that also builds resilience you know I can cry without my eyes going red sometimes because of this I wish you the best of luck on recovering from people pleasing it's an ongoing journey don't think that you realize you have a people pleasing tendency and then tomorrow you're not going to self-abandon it's little baby steps okay because you want to get used to it yourself. You don't want to just swing into like extreme, like, I'm sorry, this is my boundary now. Like, I'm not going to be doing this, blah, blah, blah. You don't need to become like a preacher or anything because you need to get used to your new self gradually. And then the people around you also need to as well. And then you can see where you can rearrange things externally in your life, whether that's, you know, you become closer with someone that you weren't so close with before when you were just like, free for all for your energy some people will like you more when you have boundaries you know and some people will like you less it's okay it's okay to get new friends if the people around you don't want to give you the space for you to grow into whoever you are going to grow into love you thank you for tuning in follow me on instagram tiktok soundcloud spotify subscribe like leave a comment etc share with your friends this is friend crush with amber killer send me questions feedback if you have a pressing issue you can always use the paid link and yeah drink lots of water tell your friends and family that you love them go be a better person live your best life hot and having fun 2023